Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the most common types of sensor interfaces. In general, most sensors will fall into one or two categories. The sensor that you have will either be an analog sensor or a digital sensor. An analog sensor will usually have two or three wires. The three wire variant has two wires for power and a third as an output for the sensor reading. These sensors usually give a voltage proportional to the specific changes in its environment. So this is how you would connect a, a regular three wire analog sensor. The two wire analog sensor will be connected like a voltage divider so our output is a varying voltage from usually 0 to 5 volts depending on the input to the sensor. Analog sensors are really great because you can easily use them without a microcontroller and you can hook them to trigger things like relays or some other functions. In general, digital sensors will need to communicate with the microcontroller using a communication protocol. The three most common protocols I've seen are I2C, SPI, and OneWire. There are several others, but those are the, really the most common that you're going to see. Uh, and the other thing is that for digital sensors, you're almost always going to have to find a library for the component that you're looking for. So it's not hard to find, you just you'd have to do a little searching for the, the, the library. So. For I2C, we have usually power and ground, and then it communicates on two wires. It communicates on SDA and SCL pins. So you'll easily be able to distinguish that by looking at the silk screen on your sensor or the data sheet. If you see SCL and SDA, you know for sure it's an I2C protocol. Now communicating with two wires doesn't really seem beneficial at first because you just went over these other sensors that basically communicate on one output wire. But when you take a look at this sensor, which is an accelerometer and a gyro, it has to output the data from the acceleration and the angle of orientation for the x, y, and z axis. So the I2C is basically helping you reduce six different data points using only two wires. Without I2C, we would need to take up six wires for your microcontroller, which you really want to use the minimum amount of analog pens as you can. What's even better about I2C is that more than one sensor can share that same pair of wires. So you could have this accelerometer, gyro, and you can use this, let's see, Yep, I squared C. You could use this compass, and both of these would use the same two pairs. You would just look up in the data sheets. I squared C requires an address, a 7 bit address. It's listed in the data sheets, and you put that into software. The problem comes up when you want to use, let's say you had two exact sensors like this. You would have two of the exact same addresses. So what you would need to use is an I squared C multiplexer, unless your microcontroller has more than one pair of these. SDA and SCL are specified pins on your microcontroller. Another common protocol is SPI. Now SPI uses power and ground, but it uses four pins to communicate instead of two. The benefit of this is that SPI is a lot faster than I2C and it doesn't require unique addresses. So we have these three pins here. SS is the slave select. You would just have a slave select pin for each sensor you want to use. So SPI can handle a lot more data, so they're usually found in comp more complicated parts like this 2.4 gigahertz transceiver. So it has to process a lot of data really quickly and I2C is a little too slow for that. The slave select pin is can basically be any digital output pin you want. The clock signal, the MISO and MOSI, those are specified pins on your microcontroller just like SDA and SCL are. Slave select can be any digital output. So you want to leave that as high in your software and then you pull it low whenever you want to use a specific sensor. So that's how you communicate with multiple sensors using the same three bus line. The last most common protocol is one wire. One wire is a lot slower than both of the other protocols, but it only uses power, ground, and an output wire. And I've only really ever seen it in basic sensors like this, di this digital temperature sensor. So it's not really as common as these two. Some sensors can even be used as analog or digital. So this microphone here can be used as an analog sensor uh, and just give an amplified signal proportional to the, the input, but the it also has a digital output. But the digital output for this is just either high or low, so you can't use it to detect small changes. It's just either on or not on. Basic digital outputs like this can be used to trigger relays and other events like that.
Okay guys, hope you liked that video. If you did like it, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing for more content like this. See you later.